these people are also um, saying that I've made some sort of U-turn on the, the huge um, Langarf development. I, I've, I've never, I haven't made any um, sort of U-turn. My position on that has always been clear. Hence why I um, insisted on the um, setup of the stakeholder panel um, against the wishes of some of the senior officers at, at Cornwall Council and in fact the um, planning portfolio holder and that's the irony of it um, and I'm, I'm trying to sort of mitigate um, what's going to happen up there um, nobody wants that development to happen but if it's going to go ahead then at least it can be affordable quality housing with the proper green spaces and a, that people deserve um, so yeah I wanted to underline that um, I've, I've, I haven't changed my mind on that and I'm in nobody's pocket as far as that's concerned and uh, can I just ask uh, obviously you're not alone in this other councillors probably have these kind of comments uh, uh, made against them mm. Um, mm. it must make it hard to be a councillor yes and no yeah the uh, other councillors do get it I think oh, I don't know why I get, I get it so much I don't know Maybe because I'm a woman, maybe because I've actually tried to engage in conversation um, with these people. That was my mistake, I think, maybe at the outset when I was a little bit naive. Um, because I do say what I think. Um, um, I'm out there in the, in the, in the, in the public eye. Um, sorry, what's the other second, the second part of that question? You said, what, um, it, how does it affect my work? Yes. Um, it does, there are times when I get home and I read some of this stuff and I see some stuff online and I complain bitterly to my partner and um, uh, um, and I think, what on earth did I get into this for? But on the other hand, it actually pushes me forward to try and do something um, because, I've, because I believe that people like myself should be encouraged to and not um, prevented from being on Cornwall Council to represent, I don't know, younger, less well-off people. You know, myself, a few years ago, was in rented accommodation <laughs> in Truro, single parent, and I'm very aware of the pressures on people, and I just have to try and remember that. <laughs> yeah. And try to represent those people, make sure that they get the sort of, not only planning results, but um, the sort of care and consideration yeah. that they should from the council, yeah. And you said, obviously, you expect an element of comments and criticism, and you probably, you know, accept that. It's a free country. But, yeah, but it's, some of these comments have been really quite personal, and it seems as though, you know, councillors are a target for people to, you know, abuse. And it, it, it is abuse. It, it is abuse. It is abuse. But I think... When you put yourself up um, for a public position, you've got to expect that. You can't be thin-skinned. And I don't want to be seen as sort of whinging, oh, poor me, you know. Um, but oh, oh, on the other hand, I would like people to know what we do. But you know what? There are also people who are really nice mm -hmm. and get in touch and like, thank you if you've managed to, if you've managed to pull off something for them. And that that is actually what, makes it worthwhile and you have to think of the bigger picture and social media makes these people seem a lot sort of larger and more popular than they are and you have to keep a sense of rationale and a sense of perspective over it yeah um and i would not want what's happening to me to put off anyone else from becoming a counselor um quite the opposite you mm -hmm. know but these people cannot have the narrative of what's going on in cornwall and um i yes they're proud of their cornage heritage and uh, who isn't it's a beautiful place to live and i'm so glad that I live in Cornwall, but I don't think they do the cause of Cornwall any favours um, by acting the way they do and saying the things they do. Yeah. Excellent.